welcome to this uh, webinar session on Karakatwas. And uh, it is a pleasure to, on the eve of Independence Day, to do this with you guys. And uh, it's a very basic lecture on Karakatwas, on introduction to astrology. And uh, although your teacher today, your speaker today is Anuradha Sharda, and uh, she had prepared a very extensive uh, PowerPoint presentation, very detailed. And I had to tell her to cut it down because uh, the course that we did was it's a very basic lecture on character course. So before we hand over the lecture to her, uh, uh, what's the duration of the lecture? One hour, two hours? What's the duration? Another G? Two hours, sir. Two hours, okay. Two hours for Karakatwas. Uh, it's quite, uh, what we teach is actually three classes. So we're trying to fit in. Yeah, so the many yeah. things that we we'll have to, at the end of the, you know, towards the end, I will have to cut, let go. Correct. correct. Now, there are, uh, what I want to say is, uh, Karakatwas is an area in astrology. You have planet Karakatwas. You have houses, you know. What is the meaning of Karakatwas? Significations. Am I right? Everyone would agree with me. What is the signification? What does a planet, the different areas it signifies? Then you have houses. Each house shows different significations or Karakatwas. One way to interpret it, one way to interpret it, is also what the house plans to do. Karakatwa. In a way, if you can broaden it out that way. Incidentally, this is a topic when we learn from any basic book of astrology or do a basic course in astrology. We land up not spending much time on it. And then later, during our journey in astrology, we realize that this is the most important part of astrology. One of the most ignored part of astrology. And then you start reading classics. Because initially when we start our journey, we only read digested material of modern authors. Then you start reading classics. And especially when you know this classic was written in 6th century. Grand Jataka was in so and so century. Saravali was later, etc, etc. So you then see how the development of Karakatwas have happened. And also at the same time, the variety in it. Each Rishi will go into different uh, realms that the other Rishi has not spoken much about. And this is where the contradiction starts coming in. The debate starts coming in. And at the same time, your experience starts coming in. I will give you, I will, Anuradha will speak on planets. She has a PowerPoint presentation, she will show that. But I will take 10 to 15 minutes. I'll try to reduce, reduce my time. We might become breathless and whatever the other reasons. But I'll go and hand over the podium to her. But I'll speak on houses. Houses is such an area. One is, say for example, ninth house. Which planet is the character? That is, say for example, Jupiter. In that you will have different, different opinions of different, different authors. So 12 houses, 12 planets, 10th house, for example, will have three, four planets as characters, Saturn, Mercury, etc. Then the other is, what I'm very interested, what I actually fall in love with, is the houses part. But as I said earlier, contradictions arise. For example, nerves, 
I'm now going into the area of Anuradha planets. Some background noise coming in. If we can just mute it out. Background noise coming in from. If you can just mute your video or audios. Nows. Nows is Mercury. This is broadly accepted. The nerves in your body is Mercury. You will find some obscure book saying Rahu is nerves. Then there is a book, a very great book, a brilliant book by Mr. Sri Nime Banerjee. He is from Orissa. Great scholar, an elderly scholar. In one of his books, he has written. In Rahu Dasha, you will get problem of nerves. So what you read here, and what you read here, Rahu nerves, and here in his book you read Rahu Dasha nerves problems. And then you see practical cases, and it works beautifully also. Of course, provided, provided there is yog in the horoscope which says that there will be problem of nerves. I'll give you another example. Again, entering that arena. Tantra. Black magic part of it. Some will say Saturn. Some other book will say Rahu. So when you are learning from an astrologer, you are doing a basic course. The teacher does not want to confuse you too much. So he will teach you a broad thing, what is broadly accepted. Broadly accepted probably in the south if the teacher is from the south or broadly accepted what if the teacher is from the north. Now let's come to houses. You read some classics, they will say profession is 10th house, second house, 6th house. You read another classic, if I remember well, Sarvat Chintamani, I only remember what B. Surya Narayan Rao wrote about it. First house is profession. If again I remember well, Satya Jataka also says first house profession or it says new beginning. Now, small, small points you get out of these classics. When we say a person's cheek, sometimes when we look at a very beautiful lady, film actress, you know, Who's got the, like in India, we had Madhubala who had the most dazzling sp uh, smile or Madhuri Dixit or in the West, uh, I do not know which actress, uh, Maureen O'Hara or, or whoever, you know, <coughs> had a beautiful smile. So the smile comes from the cheeks, the bone structures, no doubt, the face, but the cheeks and the smile going towards the eyes, towards the eyes, the smile reaching your eyes. Now if I want to find out, if I say cheeks, which house? So we'll say first house. Some will say face is second house. But you see malefics over there in that actress horoscope. What do you do? Then you refer to classics. You refer to classics or you refer to old astrologers, parampara astrologers, which, like there is one, this thing, which says ninth house is left cheeks. You know, some people have a uh, uh, mole in the left cheek. You know, that becomes a beauty mark. I do not know, you know, something like that. Like, for example, the Parampara astrologer, she uh, from the Parsai uh, Parampara, I think he's from Rajasthan, he used to be from Rajasthan. In his book, he's given left cheeks. So, these are small things which really, if, if even uh, like for example, like when you take uh, previous deeds, previous deeds in the sense, Purva Punya, we take fifth house. But there are classics like Saravali, okay, Saravali mentions left cheeks for ninth house and Punya. This part of it 
for ninth house then i think satya jataka formally we take inheritance eighth house satya jataka okay uh, it is inheritance from father side it is either parsai or satya jataka you you understanding i mean uh, inge betina are you understanding what i'm trying to say is different different things will give you different different areas for example we are looking at a person's horoscope now this comes under the prashna part of it but you can use it for centuries they have been using it for the prashna part for example somebody has a tank water tank in his house like in india where there is scarcity of water okay most houses we have water tanks in our houses now which house i want somebody to come forward and tell me which house to see this from anybody can anybody sir is asking someone from the audience to please uh... yeah i will come forward come forward yeah we have a chat Ninth house, house in high. Okay. Exactly. Now, please tell me which classic mentions ninth house. No idea. <laughs> hey, who, who was the person who answered it? Naveen. Naveen. Sorry. Naveen. Naveen. Now, Mithuna Lagna, Mars in the ninth house. Mars is fire. Saturn aspecting from twelfth house. Twelfth house is exit and your losses. Mars is also your property. So somewhere in your property there will be a tank which will be causing a leak, leakage. And when that leakage is will stop, the prosperity will begin. Are you getting it? I've seen this work. same thing in that building the water tank was leaking from 35 years but they used to never get it repaired because the person who was whose house was right under the water tank refused to allow renovation he said where will i go and stay for one month as a result the whole building you know like 100 members in the 100 flats were suffering okay i'm talking about a building that was built in 1950s 60s so after 35 years they finally got it corrected but still the prosperity did not begin in the person's life because he himself had a water tank above the fireplace mars is again fire so as per vastu Above your kitchen, okay. Water tank, water is like pouring water on your fire, and kitchen fire always needs to be robust. That shows your prosperity. You are cooking more food, etc. So finally, of course, the solution was to put a copper plate, a thick copper plate, underneath the water tank in the house, so that it separates the tank and the fire. Anyways, I've taken up a lot of your time, but these are the things that you can use in your natal horoscope. In your natal horoscope, very very helpful. Very very helpful. You can use it for your remedies. You know, you can use it for your remedies. etc by the way the classic that mentions it is prashna tantra for water tanks ninth house so this way when you read classics not just planets and karakatras houses and this then there is a shloka in fal dipika 
chapter 15 shloka number 6 chapter 15 shloka number 6 i was discussing that yesterday day before with uh, yeah. Al- yeah so that gives one exception rule sometimes when we are using karkas jupiter exalted many people say jupiter is karaka for children jupiter exalted but no children jupiter karaka for religious ceremony marriage prosperity whatever no marriage it is exalted in kendra ma purusho are you getting it so then you have to see from various angles one shloka which gives the exception rule when the karaka will be destroyed we see only jupiter exalted but we don't see the other things other riders we do not know the exception rules we do not know why because we are only reading digested book digested material do a course for 3 months basic course and we will will become an astrologer okay so i i i mean i always insist learn from classes learn from okay we we do our classes we have our online classes but I always insist one year of your life you take master one classic read it three times this year i'm going to read for the pika three times each chapter three times then next chapter you know so in fall the pika this shloka says from that karaka it is very it is very difficult to interpret that that shloka and this is my interpretation and also interpretation of few scholars from the karaka see the fourth house the eighth house and the twelfth house if there are malefics in the fourth house or eighth house or twelfth house from that particular karaka then the signification of the karaka gets destroyed or affected that's a rider that way so many riders will be given in so many books i still remember my discussion with irangati rangacharya okay i i, and I forget the exact thing he had said 5 8 and 12 he had said something like that but fall dipika i remember this chapter 15 shloka number 6 so the, the same thing is for the houses also for it but here i am taking only the karaka part of it. so please i i i see so many discussions on facebook and yahoo groups and all that people saying you know vedic astrology is ridiculous so i'm reading astrology If I'm doing Nadi astrology, I'll say Vedic astrology is ridiculous. If I'm doing KP astrology, I'll say Vedic astrology is ridiculous. This person has no Purusha, okay, but has no no prosperity or no greatness, no money. Please see in the Rashi chart how the Yog Bhanga is happening, the Karaka Bhanga is happening in the various divisional charts and especially relevant divisional charts because. in b7 the jupiter might be getting a banga it might be getting what you call an ax okay but in other areas of jupiter in other divisional charts it is not getting so one area of jupiter it is giving i in another area of jupiter it is not giving i do you understand me so anyways any questions so far any questions so far before anuradha ji takes over no i can't access it uh, i think in um, i think vital uh, should be able to access it okay no 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 questions in the chat okay nagdev ji says nan sunil sir okay. what is the what is the prominence of seeing 4 8 and 12 this is by prakash prakash rao prakash rao you always ask the toughest questions <laughs> i am so he is one of the senior uh, members he is one of I the know, senior I know, I, know, I, know, i know him very well okay i know him very well but but 
I was about to say it when I was saying that. Okay. What is 4, 8, 10, 12? It is the moksha houses. What is moksha? Moksha means complete destruction of all desires, all attachments, except everything. So, if a karaka has to be fixed, if a karaka has to be cut, shouldn't that be the one? Eighth is death, twelfth is exit. Can we agree? Eighth we know by house. It is death or longevity or chronic disease or whatever. So from any house, the eighth house governs that house. From any house, the twelfth house governs that house. Okay? Eight and twelve are moksha. Again, cutting. But fourth house is fortune. Fourth house is prosperity. Fourth house is the pillar. Is absolute the pillar from any house, the fourth house is the pillar of that house. Your mother is your pillar. Yes. Your uh, domestic life is the pillar of your life. What we call wife in India, fourth house we call Ghar uh, Wali. Ghar means house, Wali means the woman. You know, so the, the woman of the house is your wife. So that is the reason we use fourth house to also see when marriage will happen. So if the fourth house is quiet, really, really affects. Okay, somebody will have to have, is having wind, so they will have to mute their audios. Is Anuradha? Is it? Okay. I know Sorry. that sound. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> but at the same time, let us not forget. From any house, the Purva Punya and the Bhagya is the fifth and the ninth. And that is where all these concepts of Argala, etc. come in. It becomes very complicated. It is a basic course lecture. I will leave it to the uh, hands of Anuradha. It is planets only. Do not bring houses uh, in terms of your questions to Anuradha Ji. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice time. And please. Do your best. Thank you.